Hello, Ivy. Hello. <laughs> right. You've been on the list for a while. You've been recommended a good couple times for just generally being a lovely person in the community. So it's good to finally have you on. Yeah, thank you for having me. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's always nice to have someone who's not from England, too, just to sort yeah. of expand the uh, both the audience and sort of show off different people from the community from all over, from all over. I've had the Netherlands, I've had America. It's great. I love it. Right. First question. Uh, it's about your username of the main protagonist. Uh, is that just vanity? Where, where did that come from? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had to tell so many people about this at Galley. I came up with that when I was like a lot younger. Mm. Uh, I have like a list of usernames to use. Just like if I ever come up with, oh, that'd be a cool username. And I've had that list since I was like 13. <sighs> and so I added that on the list when I was 13. And um, yeah, now I'm kind of like, I don't vibe with it as much. It feels just a bit ostentatious, but I've had it for so long that I'm like, it's there. <laughs> well, yeah, see, I was the same. I mean, before I, it was just my name. It was the Doctor Who guy, which is both very bland and a bit like, yeah, I am the Doctor. Not just a. The. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the next one you were mentioning, Gallifrey One. I have never been personally as desperate as I am, especially after seeing yourself and Katie Haynes and others having lots of fun over there. So, I mean, first of all, what was it like? Did you have fun? Oh, gosh, to say I had fun is an understatement. I have probably one of the best experiences I've ever had in mm, my life. High praise. I oh, yeah. I mean, it was it really was amazing. I I mean, just imagine yourself sitting there in a packed hotel lobby and or just in a packed like program room mm. and every single person in there loves the same thing you love yeah. they want to talk about it they want to celebrate it they've got costumes on or they're handing out ribbons or they're just being so kind and it's I've, I've never felt anything like it just being in that room like sometimes I would just stop and look around the room that I was in yeah and think like everybody here is a Doctor Who fan this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, conventions are a peculiar thing. I mean, uh, again, I, I was just at LFCC in, in uh, London and it is bizarre because especially as Jodie Whittaker was there and people knew that. So just standing, look around and go, there are about 40 Jodie Whittakers just roaming <laughs> the halls. You don't get that anywhere else. So, I mean, as a follow up, as a fan of the show, like what is sort of the main thing you get out of a convention? Um, well, this is, Gallifrey One was the first really convention that I've been to. I mean, I've been to a Comic Con before, but there's never been any guests. Um, right. And it's just sort of like a very general fandom event. And it's really mm. just for shopping. Like, there's really just people selling stuff and, um, you know, there's cosplay, but there's not really events. There's not photo shoots, autographs, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Gallifrey One was the first like real sort of convention I went to and not to mention it's a convention for just Doctor Who not mm -hmm. really I mean they had little bits and pieces of like Star Trek there but it's mainly for Doctor Who so it was I mean what I got out of it was just my first big convention experience yeah. I met a lot of wonderful people a lot of new friends um I got to meet Mandip Gill uh i i kept i didn't manage to get a photo or, or an autograph but i kept sort of half running into sasha dewan there <laughs> well, you say that but there is one picture that uh, of you and mandip where you're on the floor being dead if i remember oh, correctly that was the greatest experience <laughs> i oh wow that was incredible and yeah i i definitely got to uh, meet Mandip a lot because I had her diamond pass so I was able mm. to go um, to the private q and I got I got a photo with her I could have gotten two but I missed my second one Ooh. so that was a shame yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then I got um, her autograph twice and then um, I went to the script read where I played Nick from Eva the Daleks and that's who it was <laughs> yeah so I <laughs> At the script read, um, Mandip obviously reads from the script and they pick different people out of who was in the room to read different parts. So like they would choose a Dan or a Yaz and um, 
the guy running it had asked okay so who wants to be nick and i was just sort of like okay sure <laughs> me and then he was like oh wait okay you just lay there because you're dead and so i did i just on instinct was like okay and well, I mean, like, that just shows that you're a top tier actor. You're like, just give me my role, give me my role. All right, I'm in. I'm in the character now. <laughs> yeah, I, I was very dedicated to my role, and it was just a very surreal experience, but in a great way. And really, the whole weekend was surreal. Just getting to meet so many, or meet, or at least see so many important figures in Doctor Who, um, and to see all the fans and to talk with the fans, meet them, mm-hmm. and it was just, it was so great. So I, I got a lot out of it. A lot of memories, a lot of merch. Yeah. Oh, very nice. You got to get that merch. You got to get at least like one oh, yeah. memento of the day. I, I actually, on my flight home, had to wear the majority of the clothes that I brought. <laughs> my suitcase was half full. Oh, like God. I had so many novels that I had to pack into such a tight space. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, you must have looked like you're doing one of those charity things where it's like, I'm going to wear a million T-shirts. Here we go. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I had I had to wear my ribbons. I had to wear my Ford, fourth doctor scarf I got, my big headband, like just everything. Because I can... Fashion icon, Ivy Hanover. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> well, on the theme of the scarf, um, what are some of your favorite corners of of the fandom in general you know there's cosplays there's shipping certain characters you know there's lots of there's lots to do so what's some of your favorites oh gosh um I like to call myself a bit of a jack of all trades because I try to do everything or just look into everything once or twice but if I had to choose my main um sections of the Doctor Who universe I would choose probably the show of course mainly new who but i i am watching a lot of the classic so- show and then the gallifrey audio series from big finish which i adore um with all my heart and i'm gonna give that a quick shout out because every time i bring it up i'm like by the way if anybody else wants to get into it <laughs> so you're big you're a big finnish spokesperson is what i you're am at this yeah. point how much um, is nick briggs paying you exactly <laughs> <laughs> nothing unfortunately but <laughs> get in touch I would not mind oh there we go Um, (laughs) Nick Briggs calling you out yeah in terms of the fandom I of course do YouTube videos when I have the time as a college student and someone who's working and doing an internship there's not a lot of time lately Mm -hmm. um but I do try to do YouTube videos I've written fan fiction in my time um haven't we all (laughs) yeah (laughs) I try I try to cosplay but you know I not that much I think I have like two completed cosplays related to Doctor Who, which are Romana and um, the 13th Doctor, of course. Naturally. Um, and yeah, I, I just really love seeing what everybody else does. I'm, I'm very much an observer in the fandom. I love seeing people's different projects. Um, I know I've submitted a few stuff for the community show before. Mm. I've, I've done voice acting before. I try emphasis on try (laughs) um but you know it's fun to try and it's fun to have that experience and but yeah for the most part I'm a I'm an observer (laughs) see that's that's the funny thing you bring this up you are in terms of the guests I've had on the in the past you're probably the first that doesn't have like a specific thing as it were I mean people might know you for your um, flux reviews or your obsession with Thasman or anything like that but yeah, like I mean, I've had cosplayers, uh, voice actors, whatnot. You're probably the first that just sort of is known, is just known in the community <laughs> for being just a generally nice person. That's how I came across you as it. Uh, oh, anyway. I love that. Yeah. And yeah, I do. I do. I try to dip my toes in, you know, every sort of pond that I can. So I, I, I appreciate that that's sort of what I'm known for. <laughs> No, definitely. I mean, you were saying at, about Gallifrey One as well that you saw a lot of um, people you knew, a lot of new people uh, you got to know. Is there anyone you want to shout out here, just uh, who was generally lovely? Um, I would say I definitely want to shout out Sophie Isles. Um, Ooh, yes. I, I was, they were the only person I know I knew who was going to be there. Um, I know I, I said on Twitter a couple of times, like, oh, is anybody going? Because I don't know anybody who is. <laughs> um, and Sophie was the only one I knew who was going. We were able to meet up and they were so lovely. We got to chat and um, yeah, it was just great. I met 
um, Zan and Lulu, who we sort of live tweeted the Mandip uh, script read and panel <laughs> and stuff. And we sort of, you know, that was, we've been joking how we're famous because of that, because everyone's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and we're like, we'll be signing autographs next, you know? <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. Know, but um, so I met them. I, I just met so many people. And I, I think quite a lot of them don't have Twitter. Cause that was the first thing is I was like, you can find me on Twitter. Cause I'm there all the time. And they were like, Oh, I don't have that. But I did. I met so many great people. Um, and I could sh- shout out a mile long, but definitely Sophie, definitely Zan, definitely Lulu. It was just, yeah, they, they were great. Everybody who I met was great. And I'm still like finding people on Twitter and Instagram that I ran mm. into who I'm like, Oh, like we, we like I saw you at Gallifrey One or I met you on Gallifrey One. Um, yeah, so it's just shout out to really everybody, anybody who I met, anybody who was there, you know. Yeah, if you bump if you bumped into Ivy at Gallifrey One, just give her give her a shout, give her a message. Please do, in touch. Please do because I get so excited when I see somebody posting in the hashtag. I'm like, I saw you in line somewhere. <laughs> see, that's the sad thing though, because Whenever you go to a convention, there is always those times where people like come up to you or say, you know, I, I love your cosplay or oh, I've seen you here or just you generally get to chatting and then you just lose contact immediately. And it's like, yeah. oh, or like you took a picture with them and you try and find it and you're like, oh, it does, where is it? <laughs> and it's just so and like you have to wait a whole year to possibly see them again maybe yeah well there's a <laughs> lot of people who I really hope I see again next year and and a lot of the people I met have been going there for uh, like six years or one person I met was had been going for 13 years so I was mm-hmm. like I'll definitely see you again next year then <laughs> <laughs> right but uh the last question before we move on to something I've cooked up in my head uh oh, very please. randomly you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about it's uh, a question about representation which uh, you've um you're, you've made no secret you're a big champion of it you, you it's very important but the question is to you uh with this sort of era coming to a close of, of the Chibnall and Whittaker era which has been very big on representation and quite rightly so what has that been for you personally for me uh um, obviously, you know, there's been the gay representation with Thasmin, which has come, you know, fairly at the end, really. Yeah. So, so it's there, I appreciate it. But, you know, you're always wishing, you know, maybe there could have been more. Um, but outside of me being gay, you know, I am a, a white abled woman. So there's not too much that I have to wish for in terms of representation. So it's mainly just, you know, being happy that other people are getting the representation that they've been waiting for. For example, seeing Mandip Gill, Toss and Cole, um, Joe Martin, all that, and seeing you know people's connections with that and how people are so happy about that. And uh, of course, there's always you know conversation that there could be more, there should be more, uh, there needs to be more. But seeing people happy with what we have gotten so far has been really, really great. And I know for Amanda Gill, especially, uh, she's been having a great time hearing about people's connections with that. So Mm. I'm a very um, empathetic person. So anytime I see someone happy, that makes me happy, so. No, definitely. I mean, you were saying how obviously you can relate to uh, the gay representation, uh, but obviously otherwise you get on fine. I think I'm the same uh, as a straight white male. I think I'm good. I've, I've had my fair share of myself represent. I can see bloody tenant in the background there. So that's, <laughs> he's just sort of staring me out, hiding behind a corner. He's like, oh, no. that, that was a gag for a video. And I, <laughs> I never, I probably won't release the video. And I just keep forgetting to move him. <laughs> <laughs> he's just chilling out. He's like, oh, are you doing an interview? Oh, yeah. can I come? Can I come? Anyway. <laughs> I love your impression. Oh, it's look, I gotta bust it out all the time. I mean, I did at LFCC. Every time I walk past um, someone dressed as Whitaker or whoever, I just go, well, and, and just to see their heads like turn drastically. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, the question's done. But I have a fun little game that I cooked up in my head. Whether it's a fun game, 
is yet to be seen. But um, it's about to do with the gay representation of Phasmin, which yourself and many people on Twitter have shown their love and appreciation for. But it's not just about shipping those two. There could be potentially hundreds of matches in the Hooniverse. So I've got five randomly selected characters from the Hooniverse. And I want you to help me out in trying to find their Thasmin, their perfect match, as it were. Do you think you're up for it? Sure. <laughs> let's I'm up let's see. Anything, so. We'll see. This could either be like a train wreck of us going like, uh, or some truly horrible things are about to happen. <laughs> I, I've been reading fan fictions on Archive of Our Own since I joined the internet, so I'm aware of a lot of stuff. Well, uh, in that case, I'm, I'm truly with the most educated person here, so hopefully... We can be like Cupid. <laughs> we can try. Let's give it a go. Firstly, let's let's start off easy. We've got the lovely Dan, John Bishop's own. Good old Dan. Who would be his perfect match? <laughs> I mean, the first thing I thought of was that fan art. <laughs> oh, God. Could I even show that fan art in a community show? I don't think you should. <laughs> No, if you know what we're talking about, you know. <laughs> well, there's another shout out I can give because someone at Gallifrey One had a ribbon that said, I want the guy from Liverpool to date the, the samurai dog man. So shout out to them. <laughs> um, oh, God. Also, I like, how, I like the description of samurai dog man. That should have been his character name in the credits. Come on, Chibnall, what are you doing? Oh, gosh. I, that's the only one I can think of because Dan <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it does make sense. You know, they were in the show, they were linked in that weird dog man way. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, don't don't say that. Don't say that. That could be I I don't want to go into detail, but that yeah. could be very but before much. we go to um to OTT there, let's move on. We've got a nice <laughs> another character here. We've got um <laughs> we've got the council van guy from Fear Her, the one who was telling off Rose for saying that's a council act from council van, I'm calling the council. Who, who would be his love? I keep punching the desk. <laughs> Ooh, well, we got to find a good one since he's such mm. an icon. He's a, he's a stickler I'm, for the rules, that man. Yeah, I'm he thinking of the all council. the iconic returning, like Russell T Davies era, like mini characters. Yeah. I mean, it could be, I mean, in that case, it could be like, I don't know, What's the news reporter's name that kept popping no, up? No, that's what I was just thinking right. of. I was just thinking <laughs> no, oh. literally my brain. I'm thinking um, Trinity awesome. Wells, isn't that? That's it. Name? Yes, Trinity Wells. <laughs> yes. Okay. She was the first one who crossed my mind, but I couldn't oh. think of her name. So I was like, I'll wait till I, I thought of it. And then you said the news reporter. And I was like... <laughs> We've got her. <laughs> Boom. There we go. Match made in heaven. Who needs Tinder? Who needs Grinder? We've got us two rocking it out. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like we're, you know, those, I don't know if you know the show Catfish. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like we're the hosts, but instead of a catfish situation, we're trying to get them together. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a dating show, is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> we've made we've made a match in heaven there. Fantastic. Next is oh. We have a special guest that I need to go get. Do excuse me for one moment. I'm scared. Okay. I'm excited. I'm it's scared. Be great. <laughs> so how is everybody? Would you like to see my cat, everybody, while Jack's gone? I need a rush because I don't know how long it's gonna take. Nico, come see the people. This is Nico. This oh, is a cat. <laughs> I, I was showing off my cat while you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come here. Now, the next one, and this, this, this guy, this girl, whatever he is, is this guy, and he needs some love. Who, who, who should this, who should drashing? What the hell is that? It's a drashing. You don't know drashing? It's kind of adorable, though, not gonna lie. I like him. I want love. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who does this handsome devil, who does this oh. handsome devil want? Ooh. What's your type? I don't know. Mm, he doesn't know. It's turned into a bizarre puppet show. I feel show. like him and Brian the Ood would get on well, but... Ooh. You like an Ood? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> 
that That's was good. the first thought that came into mind. But he also reminds me of the creature from Creature from the Pit. I don't know if you've seen that episode. It's a bit chaotic. Um, but You're not ood, wrong. The ood I'm going with more. Wait, Creature from the Pit. Is that the one where Tom Baker kisses it really weird? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, <laughs> I think we found it. <laughs> Another match. Hey, you feeling good about that? He's feeling oh, see, good. Now, now I brought Nico in front of the camera and see she's she's trying to get on my lap. Hi, Nico. Oh, Hi. Hi, Nico. Oh, she's gorgeous. Hi. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Let's play Nico love next. Oh, <laughs> we're Nico. <laughs> no, we're going back to the damn Nico. thing again. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dangerous territory when it comes to animals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've I've really done myself there. The next one I've written is novice Haim. <laughs> <laughs> hey Nico. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> oh okay. novice. I really shouldn't have written you. I've I've done myself in there. No, I am thinking about this diligently though. Oh, okay. Hmm. I am thinking about it. I am thinking. Sorry, there's something um, else I've noticed in the background. Who's that buff bear? Look at oh, that God. big lad. That's Hang a on. unit. <laughs> he is. Hang on. That's a <laughs> I'm also exposing myself here because I'm definitely not wearing fancy pants right now. To be fair, I was in pajamas for like most of today. So I'm, I'm with you there. Oh, look at that. Absolute <laughs> unit. <laughs> oh, Nico's taking my seat. Okay. <laughs> Nico, we need your help. <laughs> Who is <laughs> Novice Haynes Bay? Is that a word? Like is that why people use still? Um, okay. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Mm. I mean, she she was with the face of Bo for a very long time. That's a good point. Perhaps she developed feelings for that big face. And it also, considering it who face so of Bo it, ended up being. <laughs> but was it requited is the thing? Or was it an Ooh, unrequited love? That's true. That's true. It's a, mm. it's a bit more tragic if it was unrequited. That'd be um, big finish. We love stories. The story of novice Haim. <laughs> hang on, my MacBook's about to die. I don't know no why. No MacBook. My being on Zoom absolutely eats up my battery. It's the one app that just kills it. It was like full really? when we started. Yeah. Oh. Excuse well, me. Good thing I'm on a PC then. I'm all good. Yeah. So I just need to turn off one of my lights really quick. Sorry there. Is that like that's very pertwee that shirt you've got on, by the way? Very fancy. I, that's why I bought it. I found it at a thrift store. <laughs> Doctor Who really does take bad. over uh, every part of their life, doesn't it? It oh, my whole wardrobe is mm. it's either it's something vintage or just Doctor Who inspired. <laughs> Fair. Um, okay, so we were at Novice Haim. Yes. And we were talking about her unrequited tragic love for the <laughs> though. We were, yeah. That's a tricky one. I my next thought was the cat guy from Gridlock, but he's married with children. So he is. He's cool. he's got all those very cute cat babies that make me question a lot of things about Gridlock. <laughs> Good thing we didn't get like tales from the lockdown about that story, eh? Ugh. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. That is tricky. That is tricky. It is. We backed ourselves into a. Then again. Oh no, the nurse. For some reason, I thought she was a nun before, but no, she was a nurse. Mm. Hmm. But there, well, we'll have a think. We've got one more to go. Maybe we'll have okay. more luck with our final one. And okay. this one from series five, it's Angel Bob. Everybody's favorite weeping angel, Angel Bob. He, he's well, he's I, got such I a sweet little voice. I know immediately because in um, Revolution of the Daleks, wasn't there an angel who got a name, Angela? <laughs> yeah you're right oh um, no maybe they fell in love and then she got sent to prison and he's gonna same, break her out same species for once um what, yeah <laughs> oh yeah wow <laughs> we're, we're ahead of the times we're very progressive here. we are we are <laughs> um yeah I, I that was the first one that came to mind so you were right we did have good luck on that one <laughs> Woo! yes there we go we are truly the matchmakers for everyone who's not a cat yeah, <laughs> we did it! <laughs> yeah, we did it, we did oh it. god, I knew that game would be somewhat chaotic, but I think that went pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that is all that I have on my sheet. So thank you so much again for coming on, Ivy. It's been a blast. Yeah, it has. Thank you so much for having me, for thinking of me and for being flexible with the schedule because traveling to Galley 1 made my week kind of rough. <laughs> no, I don't doubt it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd mean, i love to go to Gallifrey 1, but oh God, the, the flight. I would love to have you there. To anybody <laughs> watching or listening who has out, Nico just is biting my hand, sorry. Um, anyway, back to my inspiring message. Of to course. anyone thinking of going to Gallifrey 1, I mean, if you have the opportunity, you absolutely should go. And I would love to see anybody there and be able to talk and chat and meet so hell yeah i mean i'll, I'll try my best we'll see yeah. how i'm doing next year financially yeah. <laughs> it'll be quite the trip but worth it because i mean comparing it like your interactions with mandip to lfcc personally like it's very different with the time you get with with that person it's not only is it but the cost i mean i i tweeted about this earlier um but i used sasha dewan's diamond pass as a comparison because i, I knew mandip's um prices are different than jody's like mm. um whoever sets them sets them differently so i didn't feel like that was a fair comparison but i mean the diamond passes at galley one you got two autographs two photos um you got to go to the private meet and greet and and it was significantly cheaper um yeah that else lfcc um which i believe was only one autograph one photo yeah it was very expensive i mean all i personally got was this guy's signature very happy with this yes yeah <laughs> but I, I was shocked when i realized how much it cost and then hearing about people's difficulties with it and i mean i thought gallifrey one was relatively fast paced and mm. i was like i have no idea what i'm talking about because i'm hearing about people like getting yelled at which just sounds horrible God. I was like, show yeah. masters what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing oh my horrible attempts at doing a british accent one day i'll be back <laughs> you'd, think, you'd think talking with you know mostly british people i would have one down by now but i absolutely do not yeah though no, i i heard one american person trying uh, an english accent but it went scottish weirdly quickly Oh, you know what? That's so funny you would say that because every time I try to do it, it goes Scottish for me. Really? I don't know why. It's just I, I try to do it and I, I listen to myself and I'm thinking that's that's going Scottish. That's not. So I that's if so you're just funny. a big Peter Capaldi fan. You can't help it. That's two times you've mentioned something that are so coincidentally We're so like, in sync, like, Ivy. We're so in <laughs> sync. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I have tried it. Um, I was more dedicated to it like a couple months back. I would read out Doctor Who novels to myself. In a oh, really? <laughs> and it, it, yeah, it kept queuing, skewing Scottish, and I don't know why. See, I like doing that as well, mainly because I could sort of do the voices at this point. Like, if yeah. it's a multi-doctor story, I am I sound like an insane person through the walls. It's just like, right, Doctor, what should we do? Well, what should we do? Well, I don't know. I don't know. And it's just that for hours on end. How yeah. my girlfriend Jebba has not just disowned me <laughs> is a mystery to us all. Well, shout out to her. <laughs> She's awesome. Anyway, yes, thank you for coming on the Community Show, Ivy. It's been yeah. fun. We've, we've found some love for random Doctor Who characters. We've shown off a cat. There's another one in the background. I, I was just wondering when I, if I would get to show him off. That's Samson. Hi, Samson. <laughs> oh, cats are what you never know what a cat's thinking, do you? With a dog, you can tell if it's happy or not, but a cat's just like. Yeah. <laughs>